Hello there. I'm a sad droplet of oil because I am a mystery to myself. I'm confused. Some people say I am bad. Some people say I am good. Well, welcome to BioWorld where we are going to unravel this mystery. According to the STPM syllabus, we need to know three types of lipids. Triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroid. In today's video, I will discuss the structures and properties of lipids in general, the distribution of triglycerides, and difference between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. To start our discussion, let's look at the elements that make up lipid. Lipids are made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. This is similar to the elements that make up carbohydrate. But there is a difference. In carbohydrate, the ratio between hydrogen and oxygen is 2 towards 1. However, in lipids, the amount of hydrogen is very much bigger than the amount of oxygen. Besides that, lipids also have elements like nitrogen and phosphorus. Due to the small number of oxygen atoms, lipids are nonpolar. Another property of lipid is that it is less dense than water. So because of that, lipid will float. not only floats in water because it is less dense, but it floats because it is not soluble in water. You see, lipid is hydrophobic to water. There are no hydrogen bonds between water and lipid. So you see, lipid it remains on the surface of water. However, lipid can be dissolved by organic solvents such as ethanol, which is a polar organic solvent, or non-polar organic solvents like benzene and chloroform. When lipid is mixed to these organic solvents, lipid can dissolve. As you can see here, it is a mixture. Next, let's classify lipids. The first class is triglyceride, made up of fat and oil. Usually, we represent the diagram for triglyceride with three tails. The second class is phospholipid, where we will study lecithin, a molecule with two tails. The third class is steroid. And we will study cholesterol as an example of steroid. Now, although cholesterol has a completely different structure than that of triglyceride and phospholipid, cholesterol still shares all the properties of lipids. Let me discuss one more property of lipid. Property is amphipathic. Amphipathic is when one molecule has both hydrophilic ends as well as hydrophobic ends. Now earlier we mentioned that one property of lipid is that it is hydrophobic. For the majority part of the lipid, it is hydrophobic. There is only a tiny part of the lipid that is hydrophilic. You can see here, it is the head of the triglyceride, the head of the phospholipid, and a tiny end of the steroid that is attracted to water. The majority portion of the molecule is hydrophobic. The tail of the triglyceride, the tail of the phospholipid, and the larger part of the steroid do not like water. Now, let's move on to discuss 
triglycerides. Triglycerides have two examples. First is fats. Fats are stored in adipose tissues located under the animal skin as well as around the organs. Oils are found in the seeds of plants as well as the cuticles of leaves. So from here you can see that fats are found in animals whereas oils are found in plants. Next we look at the molecular structure of a triglyceride molecule. Triglycerides are produced from the condensation between one glycerol and three fatty acids. The glycerol is very similar in structure to glyceraldehyde, which we studied in monosaccharide. The difference being that in glycerol, carbon-1 is not an aldehyde, but has a hydroxyl group. The fatty acids, on the other hand, have the carboxyl group COOH on one end and a long chain fatty acid on the other end. When placed together, the glycerol and fatty acid molecules begin to condense, where the hydroxyl from the glycerol is attracted to the hydrogen in the fatty acid. Condensation produces three molecules of water. When the molecules of water are removed, the oxygen atoms on the fatty acid side will form a new covalent bond with the carbon on the glycerol, thus forming triglyceride. This reaction is applicable for both oils as well as fats. Now, the bond between the carbon in glycerol and the carbon in fatty acid is called ester bond. So in conclusion, formation of triglyceride produces three molecules of water as well as three ester bonds. We now have a closer look at the structure of the triglyceride and compare it with the simplified diagram of a triglyceride. Earlier we mentioned that the head of the triglyceride is hydrophilic. So if we compare it to the structure of the triglyceride, the hydrophilic portion covers the whole of the glycerol as well as the carboxyl group of the fatty acid. Whereas the tail is the hydrocarbon chain that is hydrophobic. Now, this hydrocarbon chain can vary in length according to the type of fatty acid used. So next, let's have a look at the fatty acids. Take note that the fatty acid here is carbon-17, hydrogen-35, and originally this end was COO. So, if we are to draw the carbon-17, H35, COOH, this would be the full length of the fatty acid chain. So, usually it is simplified this way. Now, when we draw the full diagram, you notice that the carbons all have four bonds. So this is also known as a saturated fatty acid and its actual name is stearic acid. Saturated fatty acids are unhealthy. So what is the healthy version? The healthy version is also a carbon-17, but the hydrogen is only 33 instead of 35. So where did the two hydrogen go? 
the two hydrogen are missing because in this molecule there is a double bond form. So this type of a molecule is called an unsaturated fatty acid and its actual name is oleic acid. The unsaturated kinds are the healthy kind. So this brings us to comparison between saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. We begin with saturated fatty acids which are considered unhealthy. The reason is due to the fact that saturated fatty acids have no double bonds. Without double bonds, we find that the maximum number of hydrogen atoms are already attached to each one carbon in the fatty acid chain. Therefore, a saturated fatty acid cannot form new bonds and remains non-reactive. Another factor to consider is that because of the absence of double bonds, this molecule is straight. A straight molecule like this can become compact easily. So when the molecules are close together, saturated fatty acids become solid at room temperature. They have very high melting points. Both these factors, that is, the inability to form new bonds and the ability to become solid at room temperature, make saturated fatty acids dangerous to the health of our heart. Fats containing saturated fatty acids easily deposit in our blood vessels, leading to an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. And you find saturated fatty acids are mostly in animal fat. Let's now have a look at the healthy version of lipids. These are the unsaturated fatty acids. Now they are good for our health because of the presence of double bonds. There are even lipids that we call as polyunsaturated fatty acids. So the poly indicates that there will be more than one double bond. The advantage of having double bonds is that the number of hydrogen atoms attached to the carbons are not maximum. Therefore, unsaturated fatty acids can still form new bonds, making them reactive. Another point to note is that the double bonds prevent the molecule from becoming straight. Instead, the molecule will bend and the bend is called a kink. So due to the presence of the kink, the molecule cannot become compact. The molecules will remain far apart. Therefore, at room temperature, unsaturated fatty acids will remain liquid since they have a low melting point. So together, the fact that they can still carry out biochemical reactions and the fact that they are fluid eh, because they are in liquid form makes them suitable for the health of our heart. Lipids rich with unsaturated fatty acids will not accumulate in our blood. Instead, they will flow through our blood vessels. And you find lipids that are extracted from plant oils are rich in unsaturated fatty acid. So now, what do you think? Are lipids good? Are lipids bad? Think about it until my next video. Bye-bye.